purpose to understand today's passage if we try and remember what we learned last week. We were told to love somebody. Do you remember who? Yeah, we were told to love our enemies. Now that is hard. Why did Jesus ask us to do that? Well, it was because while we were still saying to God, shove off, I'm in charge, no to your rules, he sent his son to die for our sins so that we could be called children of the Most High, we could call God our Father, we could receive his great kindness and we could receive the undeserved gift of his mercy. Those things are massive motivators for us to love our enemies and they will help us as we think about what Jesus is asking us to do today. We're going to start reading at verse 37 in chapter 6. Are you ready? Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now in that I heard two do nots. Did you catch them? There was do not judge and do not condemn. That means us trying to decide whether people are good or bad, whether they're worse than us, whether they should get punished for something. That is not our job. That is God's job because he is righteous and he knows people's hearts perfectly. So we are not to judge or condemn. The second one is do's. There were some do's, weren't there? So there was do, forgive when people hurt you because we have been forgiven so much when we trust in Jesus. And there's also do, give. So how much should we give? A little bit. Well, let's see what it says in the Bible. It says to give a good measure. So what's a good measure, do you think? That's a pretty good measure, isn't it? A good measure. I think that's pretty generous. Well, let's see what it says. A good measure pressed down. I've got my spoon. Let's press it down. Yeah, there is a bit more room now. I'll pour some more in. There we go. That's it. Oh, that's looking pretty full, isn't it? Let's say a good measure pressed down. Oh, shaken together. Hmm. Yep, there is a bit more room in there, isn't there? I can see some. Let's put it in. What does it say? Shaken together. Running over. Running over. Wow, that is a full bowl. And that is what Jesus is saying. Do not limit how generous you are. God gave his son to die for us. We can be generous and give and give and give till it overflows. Next, Jesus tells us a parable. Let's read it together. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Now, if you cover your eyes, can you see? What would happen if you walked around like this? You'd bump into things, wouldn't you? You'd trip, you'd fall. If you couldn't see, you would need someone to guide you. Now, what if the person that was guiding you also couldn't see? That wouldn't be any good at all, would it? You would both then stumble and trip and fall into a pit. What Jesus is saying here is that we need someone who can see to lead us. And Jesus is the leader who can see. 
He has the answer to our rescue plan and so we need to listen to and follow him. He is the one that will lead us to salvation and rescue. The last bit of today's passage is verse 41. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Now, Jesus is using a picture here to help us to think about our own sin when we ignore God and we say shove off and do things our own way. We look at people, don't we, around us and we think, oh, they're doing something bad there. And we like to tell them, we want to tell them, don't we? But Jesus is saying, it's like pointing out this tiny speck of sawdust in somebody else's life, their little sin, when in fact, we have an enormous plank in our own eye. I can't see a thing with this in my eye. How can I help somebody else take a speck of sawdust out of their eye? First, I need to repent say sorry and turn from my sin to take the plank out of my own eye before I can help somebody remove this little speck from their own eye. So, we have been given so much by our Heavenly Father and we have Jesus as our leader and our King and he tells us how to live for him and we can show that in the way that we live our lives, by giving and forgiving people, by not judging people, and by repenting of our own sin. To help us remember that, we're going to make a pair of glasses. To help us see, we need to follow Jesus, and we need to take the plank out of our own eye. Now you can decorate these glasses any way that you like, as colourful as you want. And we're gonna stick this side on Jesus to help us know we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And this side has got a plank on it to help remind us that we need to repent of our own sin to follow him. I would love to see your pictures of your crafts. But before you go and do that, let's pray because we need help to live Jesus's way, don't we? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die and that we have received so much because of this. Help us to love the people and that we see and know. Help us to be generous and kind to them. Help us not to judge them. Help us to follow Jesus' way and not the ways of the world. And please show us our own sin so that we can turn and repent and live lives for you. In Jesus' name, Amen.